gracious to us again this morning. Amen. Let's be on our feet as we take this song together to just appreciate him again. Daily as I live, no open eyes I breathe. Let my whole life be expressions of your grace. Daily as I live, I know open eyes I breathe. And let my whole life be expressions of your grace. I cry out, a Father. your voice again and say, Lord, we thank you. Jesus, we thank you for making us join her with the Father. Ah, we thank you. We hallowed you this morning. From the depth of your heart, just say some few words unto him. Hey, Lord, we are grateful. We are grateful. We are grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Thank you, Father for showing us mercy again to have brought us at your feet. Thank you for all you've done. Thank you for this morning. Thank you, Lord, as we trust you again to speak to us and to help us arising from here. Lord, we'll be wise servants. We'll be wise virgins. Lord, we we'll arise with you. There shall be a new beginning. There shall be a turnaround. Lord, we thank you. We are grateful. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We are turn with me quickly, be seated. We are looking at the ten virgins. And we are looking at Matthew chapter 25, verse 1 to 13. I will request our brother to help us read. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and were, went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. 
they that were foolish took their lambs and took no oil with them. For the wise took oil in their vessels with their lambs. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lambs. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lambs are gone out. For the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there, not, there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. Why they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterwards came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Praise the Lord. Amen. Very familiar passage about the ten virgins. And three things I will mention there as we'll be considering them. And the Lord will help us to tie some things together as we pray together this morning. We discovered the Bible is talking about virgins, talking about oil, and talking about the lamb. The virgins, oil, and the lamb. And we all know that oil is very important. If you have a car, you know how important, important oil is to the engine. The engine is to take you far and near. It all depends on the strength of the engine if the car should take you anywhere. And we know that in different areas we use oil. We use oil, even the clothes we are wearing, some, we, if you ask tailors, they tell you that they use oil to iron the, to oil the machine to function properly. Even down to our cooking, you discover that we use oil. Down to our body, we apply oil, we apply cream. It has its own various function. Various function to lubricate the, the place. It will to make you shine, shiny in the soup. You know that you cannot eat without oil. So you discover that God uses the things we use just to show us what we will encounter. And here it has been illustrated that this ten virgins we are waiting for the master. Waiting for the master. And if you read the book of Proverbs, the Bible talk of our lives, Proverbs 20, 27, 21. The Bible says that, let me check that scripture. Or can you project, or project it on us? So you discover that we, we are the carrier of uh, this oil. And uh, when you want to talk about this oil, you are referring to God's presence, God's grace, the anointing of God upon your life, the presence of God. Amen. So you discover that carrying this oil was very, very important to every one of us, to every, to, I mean, to this ten virgins. But what shocked me, what began my concern started from, why is it that there were ten virgins, five foolish Five wise. Ten. Ten. I was expected that at least there should be nine wise and one foolish. But it was five foolish. Five wise. And it gave me a concern. If I should call because of time, no, I would have called one of the doctors to share with us. But I hope that you are all, all aware. When you go to the hospital and they are talking and they say, Kai, we will do our best. But this thing is 50-50. What does that mean? Praise the Lord. It's 50-50. So when you hear like that, it's like everybody 
we tremble. Lord, show mercy. Lord, show mercy. Lord, what shall we do? Hey, because you know that they are not giving you full assurance that this thing, uh, this situation, it will be cured. They will try their best, but it will, may not end well. So when the Lord is said, five foolish, five wise, five foolish, five wise, he gave me a body, my sister. That we are seated in the church like this. And the Lord is saying that salvation is cheap. You got it very cheap. You didn't pay for it. But he's telling us that getting there, getting there is not cheap. Five, many, many, many will not enter. And of course, you know, I'm, I, I am stressing the foolish first. You discover that that verse 11 where we read, the Bible says when they got there, the masters, when they were saying, Lord, Lord, as all of us are calling, Jesus is Lord, Lord. And Lord, open for us. Lord, open for us. He only said, depart from me. I never knew you. God forbid that as we are seated, the Lord will be saying, as we are all filled and many, half, it is half. And then I'm asking myself, Lord, be merciful to me. Why will I be among the foolish as we progress? We will see, and I was asking, what could this be? What made them, you know, they were all children of God. They were all virgins. They were all born again. They were all prophesying, so speaking, many speaking in tongues. I know you read the book of Matthew, you say, many will come that day. We say in your name, I prophesy. In your name, I cast out demons. In your name, I, do, I did miracles. And of course, you know that some of us that condemn orthodox churches is with the Pentecostals that are filled with the Holy Ghost and are picking tongues, are casting out demons, are praying, are healing, are preaching, are carrying, are carrying. We are the ones that know the truth. When you read that scripture, so it became a matter to my heart. And I was saying, Lord, what could that happen? If you read the, the, the translation of uh, other translation where we read, the Bible says those foolish, they forgot to carry. So on translation, it says they forgot to carry the oil. As important as the oil is, as important as the presence of God, as important as the grace, and that there was misunderstanding. They misunderstood the Lord, even though they were saved. This free salvation, thank God for our pastor, thank you know, when it is projected, you see how Jesus suffered, and you'll be pitying him. Hey, woo, yeah, 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 yeah. And it ends up there. You don't know that it costs him, it costs the father, it costs the son. And it has been given to you freely. So when that deep understanding was not there, they took it lightly. If you read the scripture, the Bible says uh, people were invited uh, for a banquet and they gave excuses and they took it lightly. So they took their salvation lightly. They didn't understand they didn't understand. And I was searching the scriptures. I discovered that even with the apostles, as long as Jesus was with them, he sent them out. They went and preached. They cast out demons. And all of that he did for them. There were a lot of compromise. They could easily just shift. They could easily just, just deny him. They could easily just do anything. And the Bible says, when he was about to leave, the book of my, uh, Luke, to read uh, uh, 24, the Bible says he opened their eyes that they might understand the scripture. He opened their eyes. 
he opened their eyes. And that is why the issue of eternal life, it is not something that you will talk with. That is why in eternal life, it is something that you, for you to see the man, the master over there as wise servant, while we are having eternity in view, is not something to, 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 to handle carelessly. The way we are handling in our days. The Bible says that he opened their eyes. He opened their understanding. Amen. Amen. So you discover one thing that they misunderstood. They didn't understand this fact, Virgin. Foolish ones. Remember, we are dealing with foolish first. If the Lord give us more permission, we touch the wise. But our concern, how is God will help us and will take us out of foolishness? It was that they, this foolish, never understand. They didn't understand and they didn't bother to seek. You are in the church, you come to church every Sunday, every time, and the thing is just so light in your heart. Other things take are more weighty on your heart. This, you just come and just go, and yet nothing is pricking your heart year in, year out. There is something your understanding is not there. Even when I got born again, and in those days, ah. Thank God for my husband. I will fast. As I'm finishing 21, not born again when I was growing. And I'm still growing by the grace of God. 21 fasting, I'm going into dry. My husband will say, my wife, what is this? I say, why am I not understanding the scripture? It was a body. I want to love this God. I want to. What is happening to me? And one day, as I was praying, as I did dry fasting, I was praying, I discovered that a veil, if you see the way the veil was folded, 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 and covered my eye tightly. Brethren, I was born again. I was speaking in tongues. When the Bible says the God of this world has blinded their eyes, when the Bible says, well, as we all behold him in his, uh, 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 as in the mirror, we are being transformed from one glory to another. There is a veil that will make you not to understand this, this matter that is very crucial. And until you take responsibility, <laughs> you will be among the foolish. And what is the foolishness? The devil will rob you of, of God's provision. The devil will rob you of God's purpose for your life. The devil will rob you of God, of, of God's glory for your life. It was glory the wise were entering into. It was glory. But the foolish, they didn't know. And they were denied. Even the Lord, Lord, they were calling here. Everybody knew them as Christian. The Lord said as they were going and were calling, Lord, Lord. They, they were not allowed. He said, I never you knew you. I never knew you depart. Depart from me. Praise the Lord. So another thing I saw is that there was misuse of what? misuse of of value they didn't value this. what you value you place much in pottery there were a lot of compromise they didn't value brethren value your salvation value your relationship with God value this grace. Every one of us that is born again, the level of grace, level of this oil you are carrying, but the value you place on it depend that we, we, we decree or we, we, we depend on how far you, you go with God and whether you will fulfill the purpose of God for your life and meet the master in glory. Was present, very the Lord, and He was ready to run. He was ready to prize it. If you don't prize your salvation, even though you have gotten it, you will lose it. 
the journey to heaven, all of us were journey, you know, <laughs> but brethren, ah, we are journey, but many, 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 many will fall by the roadside, many, many, many will not enter, is the scripture. He said, many will strive, but will not enter. They are striving in compromise, striving in falling and rising, striving in sin, that the grace of God is there. You come back and confess. One brother will go and confornicate and come and do rashaka shaka shaka. He said, yes, I'm still there. The glory has departed. The Holy Spirit is being silent. It's being quenched. Trivialize the grace of God, the anointing of God. Praise the Lord. So we are considering the foolish. They were born again Christians. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Working together, coming together. But they did not value the salvation. Please, when it is the place sin and God, what do you go for? They place money and God, what do you go for? If they place pleasure and money what, and God, what do you go for? You will know it all. The Bible says the spirit of God bear witness with our spirit. You will know. It's not going to be strange. If you are serving God, you are sold out like Daniel and his friends were sold out. You are sold out like Joseph in the Bible. You are sold out as we have been reading other brethren in scriptures. Ah, you will know. You will know. And this morning we are begging God that none of us will be foolish. If it is that you don't understand, you are just careless, just come to church, sit down and go back, just belong to a unit and be pretending, pretending. Ah, it is beyond that. When you come for activities, when they are not there, ah, it's time to relax. Ah, this one and this. Ah, my dear. Hey, hey. Getting there is not easy. But I'm, I'm, I'll be moving fast. Please, just before me, I'm, I've not started talking what, seriously the things that are on the heart of God concerning you and me seriously. Yes. Follow me. Hallelujah. So you will discover that they didn't value it. And the master knows. God knows. You can't deceive anybody. But God knows. And he knows where to place you at the end of it. At the end of it all. Praise the Lord. Another thing. Why is it that the lamp was quenched and they didn't know? Could it be that it was leaked? Misuse of anointing, misuse of the grace of God, misuse of God's mercy. This is a serious matter that is happening in our days. Misuse of the grace of God. Many have misused it. Many have been anointed, but have misused. Many, the oil was just leaking out, leaking out, and they never knew. Many. And permit me, permit me to say that God is not a respecter of any man. So, twist it, twist it, twist it, and Push it on the congregation so that whatever they are doing is a man of God. You don't talk to the man of God. So, I use the scripture, Numbers chapter 12, where the Bible says, and, and other scriptures, when the Bible says that most Aaron and most uh, Methopian woman. I don't know, from the beginning of the scriptures, you will discover that in Exodus, the Bible says, Jethro, Moses married Jethro's daughter. I don't know what happened. It's silent. But maybe it's chaplain, we know better as a theologian. But, you know, they, they, they were gossiping him. I married an Ethiopian woman. Eh? Is it only him that God speaks to? 
us too. God speak to us. And the Bible says, God says, who are you? Moses is the meekest person on earth. Who are you to gossip me? I speak to him face to face. Other than, uh, other than uh, the, uh, Moses. Why didn't they correct him when he was going for that? They would have said, ah, is this thing going to be where they kept quiet only to gossip in the secret? And then the spirit of envy and competition. Ah, even we might speak. God speaks to us. Envy. You no, know, we'll come to that early. That's why as I say I've not started discussing what. And this time, this time, take care. Take time. Praise the Lord. So you discover that jealousy. Do you know that sister? And this sister was staying in a decent compound with a sister in that church. And this sister knew that that sister that was to marry was bringing in girlfriends, boyfriends. They kept announcing on the altar that, ah, this, this are going to be joined. If there is anything you know, this sister kept quiet. Shortly after, that, that wedding didn't last up to six months. It scattered it today. The sister kept her mouth cram. That, ah, make her no find trouble. Mind your business. See, if you are to bear one another's burden and 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 check one another. The mess we are seeing in, in our days will not be there. How can a man of God we come, we say, aha, and you give in to it. We are speaking, speaking to young people who compromise. How have you helped God that has put Praise the Lord. Misuse of anointing. Many anointing. Many people have been misused, mis, 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 have misused this grace. I won't go into detailed levels of anointing. That is not what we are discussing today. But I'm saying every one of us, if you are born again genuinely, you are carrying some level of grace, some level of anointing. Praise the Lord. So don't ever let anybody deceive you. This one is a big man of God. When he calls you, it will fall in say, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So that when you go there, young people, young people, many have misused this grace. Many have used, misused this anointing. I don't know, but God is so faithful. One of it was this thing I'm talking he said that one he, he was admiring one man of God from afar. And he was because of the grace of God upon him. And as he was going, he went so that he would be helped. The man of God was rather lusting after her. These are the things that people don't want that it should be preached. It is blessing. God bless you. God favor you. God do this. Why? God is weeping. And you are in, Jesus will say, we are, is foolishness. Praise the Lord. If not that we are to be holy, eh? and we leave vengeance for God. If anyone is trying that kind of thing, whether you go for counseling, or you go for, and you sit down, a man of God is trying to put hand, and get up and slap him on the face, and with him all the earth, and for the glory of God. Praise the Lord. So you discover that if I'm not able to talk, I bet I need to touch this one. Amen. So you discover that many misuse this anointing, this grace. And so when it is being misused, God is not feeling. Because I was asking, the Holy Spirit has been given to guide us, teach us, instruct us. Where we are the position of the Holy Spirit in the life of this foolish virgin. If you read Isaiah 30, I think verse 21, it says, whether you turn to the left, or to the right, you hear a voice saying, this is the way, walk into it. Where were the position of the Holy Spirit in the lives of this one? And I discovered that 
it is their secret life. They quench the presence of God, quench the Holy Spirit, and they were only manifesting in the flesh. And they felt that, ah, uh -uh, that day, some people think that, say that, ah, when I graduate, I will be serious with God. Now, like this, you know, I need to write exam, and I'm not so brilliant. I need to ask. I need to do this when I graduate. Some will say, ah, you know, I don't have anybody taking care of me. I need to, God, uh, uh, this man is just helping me. And uh, when I graduate, I will be serious with God. Who told you that your life is in your hands? Some of us feel that you can just twist God, twist him, twist him. You know God, uh, you are merciful, you are kind. So just be my servant. I will twist you. When I need you, that's when I, uh, whatever I want to do with you, that's what I want to do. <laughs> Brethren, you are a foolish man. You are a foolish woman. Praise the Lord. So you discover that it was misuse of anointing, misuse of the grace of God, even in counseling. Counseling. Eh? Don't cancel somebody to hell. If the case is too much for you, disciples, go and pray. Some of us, you will not even pray. You use your past wisdom, use your wisdom and give a counsel. So, uh, there was a counsel that was given somewhere. This lady repented and she was an unknown believer and she gave her life to Christ. She saw this, this, uh, this servant of God. And went and asked, oh, me, I've given my life to Christ and said, Z. And I'm in a relationship with an unbeliever. What do I do? He said, Go and pray. Which go and pray. The new convert doesn't know his left and her, his right. And he's asking you, What do I do? Do you value that soul? And it's out of fear. Let, the, let it not be that I'm the one that has stopped it. Go and pray, what? You can go and pray, but give the right cancer. Dark and, darkness and light, do they go together? You think it will not cause you to serve Jesus if he doesn't marry that person? After all, they were in knock for, for him. Think you are weary, he's strange. Oh. I knew him as a born again child of God. This ring is strange. And he became angry. And he left. When he was even married, some of us, we didn't even know. But as God showed mercy and encountered him, he went and repented somewhere. And they prayed for him. He, it was when he came that was narrating all this in me. I didn't know that it was anger manifested and manifested, but only the thing has not finished. That I will sleep like this, wear all my nightgown, everything I sleep. And then I will just get up and discover that everything, I will know when they remove it and I will pack. Somebody is manifesting some assault house. And when that thing, the Lord delivered him, the Lord started prospering him. He had a had secondary school, if you see prosperity, you don't know what sin can cause you. Hiding sin, bitterness, when you are corrected, you are not looking at the position of God in your life. You are angry. Praise the Lord. These are just the little, little things we will touch. But the main thing that God will, is about to dress, please, I beg you, even if you didn't hear anything, open your ears. Amen. Open your ears for, to this one. Amen. Praise the Lord. So you discover that God himself was doing something. Open with me to Proverbs chapter 16, verse 2. Media, please project this quickly. Project this for me quickly, quickly, quickly. Or oh, my leader, are you, are you with the scripture? The preparation of the heart in mind and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. Yes, continue. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weighs the spirits. Hey, praise the Lord. Let me just take all the scriptures at once. Amen. Read uh, Isaiah 3 verse 8. Isaiah 
Isaiah 3 verse 8 For Jerusalem is ruined and Judah is fallen because their tongue and their doings are against the Lord to provoke the eyes of his glory to provoke the eyes of his glory hallelujah Jeremiah 17 verse 9 yes Jeremiah 17 verse 9 the heart is deceitful above all things hmm. and desperately wicked. Hmm. Who can know it? Continue. I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways hmm. and according to the fruit of his doing. Hallelujah. They had something happened to God. Listen to me, please, everybody. Something happened to God. When you are talking of wickedness and all of that, there is one that happened to God that he never take chances. The devil wanted to overthrow God. And he said, I will do this. If you read the book of Isaiah, I will do Since that time, and you know that all of us... <laughs> It was because Jesus has come to redeem us. If not, as the devil deceived Adam in the garden of Adam, the devil took over and we are all born in that nature. Praise the Lord. So, anytime, anytime, please listen to me. Anytime anyone is approaching God, what he's doing, he's watching the heart. Probably these foolish ones where they were even righteous. No, the Bible called them, they were virgins. They were doing everything. Oh, physically, they, they, even the chaplain will clap for them. Looking at the heart. Life and ministry. God is jealous over. God is jealous over, you know, where we read, he said, they provoke the eyes of his glory. And I told us that the Bible said the spirit of a man is the, eye, is the lamp of God. He searches the heart. Whatever you are doing, it is the heart God is searching. That decision you are taking, where is it? Who originated it? And to whose glory it is, is what God is seeing. And that's why many will be disappointed. They will be so disappointed because they, they were virgin. They served the Lord. They felt they served the Lord very well, but God was looking at the heart. Anything, any service you are rendering to God, God is looking at the heart. Anything is you are bringing to God, God is God weighs the spirit. God weighs the spirit. Is He coming out of it to destroy me and take over? Is He had that want to show off? What is who is there? Is it Mister Flesh? Is it me? Is we spirits? The Bible says God weighs the spirits. He want to know the kind of spirit that is in charge of what your action and your doings at a particular time. He doesn't joke with it. He had an experience. And he will not permit any man. Not any man. Not any man. He said, my glory I will share with no man. I will not share my glory with any man. If there's anything, when the Lord was confronting me with this years ago, I said, my God, I will, will see a talk. He will say, will you take my glory? Will you share my glory? Even in testimony, even in message. And that's how my people will keep rebooking. Oh, mommy, you have preaching and I can take weeks and only be praying. On that night, or that day I will not see that time she's even here or somewhere I sit and I'm putting down scriptures because I don't want to give anything that is not from the Lord I will be accountable to that as good as ministry is as good as serving God is 
God is careful. What is the originator of this that is happening? Is it safe? Is it Mima? Nowadays, Mima. Mima. Praise the Lord. Mima is so much. Even in life and ministry. Praise the Lord. Ten minutes. Thank God I will soon be through. So what are we talking about? God searches the heart. And that's why many will be disappointed. That's what the Lord asked me to tell you. The ministry you are doing, who asked you to do that one? Is it that you just had a dream, maybe because of all that is happening, and then you just get up with a dream, and you say, hey, this is what the Lord is asking me to do. Is it the Lord I'm sending you? If it's the Lord, there will be provision. The Lord will glorify you. The Lord will go ahead of you and confirm his word. And the work will last. The work will see his glory because God doesn't want anybody to work for him. He wants to work, do his work through a man. And I was invited to go and speak in Abuja. And as I go pray, it was just, I was just seeing poo and dead leaves on the road. <laughs> and I refused to go. It was later we got hearing about that kind of person, a terrible person, an agent of hell, and how many men of God he has, has gone, has gone as a result of that year doing ministry. I would have gone. I don't know what would have happened. Even as good as the work of God is, Father, am I the one doing this? And at times I pity leaders, leaders that for you to be a leader is a fearful thing. You know? It's a fearful thing. Not only yourself, all the people you are putting to handle the work of God that you didn't receive from God, you will account for. Some are rotting inside. And they will come and stand on the pulpit and display everything because they have stayed in church for years. And you didn't collect him. Even the, the Lord Jesus collected his disciple from the Lord. Some have started ministry. All they need, they are doing is to catch brethren, catch here, catch here. Come and so walk me, walk with me. Come and walk with me. Come and walk with me. And then they, some have misbehaved in other places. But ah, anywhere as they come, they are welcome. You are welcome because they can speak eloquent. They have spiritual language. They can display spirituality. They are bold and good voice. God is not interested. Because God will lose battle if he should use that vessel. Because the man that is on the inside is not from him and is not of him. So there is no way he will release grace. He will release anointing. He will release power that will defeat and counter the works of darkness. So you are destroying his works. The Bible says, if you don't gather with me, you are doing what? He will scatter. So that is the position of the church today. It's so critical. It's so critical. And I'm bold to declare it because the Lord asked me to declare it. It is so critical. Don't end as a foolish virgin. The Lord searches the heart. Testimony you give, special number you give, who originated it? Did you confirm it with the Lord? Is the Lord that's leading you? Some of us would have started ministry. Some people have disturbed, disturbed, disturbed. Some will say, this type of thing that God, if you start something now, you will see how you are. one told me that you are just wasting away in the good new chapel. But the Lord has not asked. The Lord is careful. He watches, he weighs the spirit. Who is on the throne? Where is that thing coming from? And to whose glory it is, he's checking. And if it is not of him, it's rubbish. Very level. This morning, I would like you to, to bring your heart to God. See, this thing is beyond you and me. 
it is God. It is God you will hold if you want to end well. And you say, Lord, don't let my heart deceive me. I have come to learn and realize that all about my compromise, my sin, how that I have not even prized my salvation well, it is because my heart is not with you. And the Lord who is strengthened, the Bible says his spirit, his eye go through and fro to strengthen those whose heart are fully committed unto him. He's saying there is something else there. A husband and wife that they can sleep with each other, sleep on the same bed, but they are not together. They are not together. They will come to church and serve. They are not together. Husband is hiding his own going. Wife is hiding his own. God cannot feel the, a hypocrite. You come and discharge duties and all of that. God is seeing the heart. A life that loves to swift quickly into sin, lying, fornication, hatred, bitterness. Ah, God is checking that heart. If I should feel that heart, what will come out will not be of me. And I will lose the battle. So he will allow you, you are pampering yourself, you are serving God. But this morning, the good thing is, the Bible says, I will give you a new heart. That is my joy. Ezekiel 36 verse 26. I will give you a new heart. I will take out of you this heart that I'm checking. I will take charge of the heart. And I will help you. Amen. When God has finished giving me the message. And I saw I, fruits were here. And Imaku was bringing. Where is brother Imaku? Huh? was bringing water for washing hands and picking the fruits. And I said, ah, what is Imaku, what is it? He said, his name is Emmanuel. I am with my church if they will obey me. This morning, the Lord is calling for you. This thing is beyond you. It's something that only God that searches the heart that can do it for you. And you're saying, Lord, I don't want to end like this foolish virgin. Why am I so light about the things of the heaven, things of eternal life? Why am I so careless? I can be serious one day, the remaining how many days? My heart is not there. Lord, show me mercy. I am born again, I speak in tongues. But Lord, I don't want to end like a foolish virgin. As you want to help me today, I'm available. Close your eyes and begin to pray. Shall we begin to pray? Begin to talk to God. Begin to talk to God. How will this be? We couldn't expand much, but maybe in the second service. But the Lord, show me mercy. It's not something you will stand, you will just comfort yourself and look at the works that you are doing and you are seeing results. It's not about results. Hey, yeah, they will say your name and did great miracles. No, about result. It's about what God is seeing the heart, the heart you are carrying. Will you open your mouth and pray? Shall we rise on our feet? Pass me not, O gentle Savior. He my humble cry why know does thou art call holy savior do not pass me by gentle savior say savior
Begin with me afresh. I don't want to end like fully that food, those fully virgin. I don't want to take things for granted. And you are saying, Lord, Lord, begin with me. I want you to just walk to the front here quickly. We will pray together. You are telling the Lord, you are telling the Lord. Yes, 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 the Lord is here. He said, I will begin afresh with you. I will begin afresh with you. Anybody like that, just walk to the front here. We will pray together. We will cry unto God together. A new beginning, a new beginning. Do not pass me by. Gentle Savior. Join quickly, join quickly. Save your here, my home. You are there struggling with lust, struggling with lying. Ah, we don't walk out and say, Lord, Lord, God bless you, my beloved. Any other person? the help of God. Don't say you will go back and go and pray. What God is about to do, he wants to do it now. What God wants to do with your life, he wants to do it now. Don't say you will go back and go and pray. God bless you, my sister. Don't say because I saw the God reveal to me the people that we need on this altar. Don't go back. You will see God and struggle with that sin. You will see go and be struggling with your heart. You will still go and be struggling. Walk out. God is saying, I want to do a new thing in your life. Amen. Once again, Savior here. Walk out. Walk out. Put the devil to shame. Say, I am going with my Lord. I am going with the Lord Jesus. I am going with the Lord Jesus from today. Yes, God bless you. Come forward. Come forward. Yes, Lord. You, you promise you will help this one.
Jesus, I can save us. Savior, Without any help anywhere. Savior, Savior here. My Five foolish virgins went to get oil later on, but when they came there, but remember the statement that came from inside I have never known you. This matter is heavy. We thank the Lord for the opportunity to get oil now to make things right. Please, can we pray? Those in front, those of us there, if you want to come forward, please do. Because I believe that everyone, all of us, have something to settle with the Lord. Every time we come to church, it's an opportunity, sir, to make things right with God. Take advantage of it. There's help in the church. There's help. I usually say that whatever you're struggling with and you've not been able to find help on your own, you need another help. You need somebody else to help you. And God has given us a platform. Please, those of us in front, can we ask the Lord to have mercy on us? Whatever prompted you to come in, whatever the Lord convicted your heart and you took the step to come forward, can you ask that the Lord will have mercy on you. Whatever foolishness that, um, you know, somebody's action is a function of whether he's wise or he's foolish. Several issues were raised that I don't have time to emphasize. But just pray. Respond to God. Those of us in front, ask God for mercy. If you need to give your life to Jesus, ask Jesus to come into your heart, be your Lord and Savior. You need to repent. Or whatever it is that you step out, can you make a prayer of commitment to Jesus? Thank you, Father. Say this prayer after me, those in front of Lord Jesus. This morning, I've heard your word and I've responded. Here I am before you. Have mercy. Cleanse me. Have mercy. Purge me by your blood. Help me from today not to go back to where I'm coming from. I receive fresh oil in my lamp to keep moving on as I wait on your return. Help me to the very end. In Jesus' name we are praying. Our Father, we so much appreciate you for your word that has come very You speak uh, and address issues at their roots. Thank you again for speaking very clearly and very strongly through your servant that you've been using very strongly amongst us. We are so grateful. Lord, we have responded uh, in different ways. These are brethren that have stepped out. We plead with you that you have guidance they need going forward. Make available for them. Abba Father, keep them faithful till you return. We pray for every one of us that will not be in church and be foolish. Abba Father, we ask, O oh God, that you help us among the five wise virgins so that as you return, we will not bring forth more of your counsel in the second service. For in Jesus' gracious name we are prayed. Amen. Please, you can step this way. They will attend to you. We are. Uh